Hi, I'm Greg Benfield. In this short screencast, I'm going to show you some examples of how program level Moodle spaces are being used at Oxford Brookes University. But first, let me give you an overview. As well as every module, every program at Oxford Brookes University has a Moodle site automatically created for it. This is to make it easy for course teams to provide documents, readings, web links, multimedia resources, and activities like discussion forums that students will find relevant throughout their time on a program. Sometimes, rather than using the automatically generated program sites, it can make more sense to use a Moodle site for a collection of programs. We'll look at some examples like this. Unlike the automatically generated program spaces, this requires a one-time only user-generated course to be created manually. Students and staff from the relevant courses are enrolled in it using metalinking. If you do it this way, you need to make sure that the unused Moodle program spaces are hidden from students. It's good practice to check this at the start of every semester, no matter how you do it, just to be sure that students have access to only the right Moodle spaces for them. OK, let's take a look at some examples of how course teams are using program spaces at the moment. Our first example from the Faculty of Business is the undergraduate degree Business and Management. This is a fairly typical example of a program using the automatically generated program level space. Every program site has a Moodle book format electronic course handbook template provided for it. As you can see, the course team has adopted this electronic handbook. We won't look at it. You'll be familiar with its contents. As we scroll through the home page, You'll see that this site is primarily used to provide students with news and core course information. There's a welcome from the course leaders and links to other members of the course team, including links to support services such as the student support coordinators, and information about how to choose modules to form your course. And because there's a new system of academic advisors in operation during this academic year, the course team has taken the opportunity to provide lots of advice about how this new system works. As do many such sites, the course team has grouped some course information for students by their year level within the program. Information for first years, second years, and third years. Also, like many other sites, there's a frequently asked questions section and news about exchanges and so on. This site has also made interesting use of the Moodle glossary tool. Because there are quite a lot of these web links and other resources, the alphabetical listing using the glossary tool is quite a good way to organize them. Our second example is from the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. This is an example of where it makes more sense to manually create a single site for, in this case, two programs, than to use the automatically created program sites. That this is because the course information relevant to these programs, the History of Art Single Honours and History of Art Combined Honours, is substantially the same. As with our previous example, this one provides students with core course information. Things like academic skills guide, assessment criteria that are used throughout the course and so on. Of interest in this site is that the course team took a decision to be very open and transparent about its quality enhancement processes. So it publishes every module's annual review in this site for students to look at so that they can see how their feedback has been analysed by course teams at annual review time and how that feedback has been responded to in subsequent runs of the module. The other major emphasis of this site is on graduate opportunities. So the course team provides information about postgraduate courses both at Oxford Brookes University and at other institutions as well. Information including 
costs of these courses and deadlines for enrolment. And they've also included some links to graduate employment opportunities, including internships. Our third example, this time from the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences, is the Midwifery website. This site provides many of the usual things that we've already seen. There are two other things to take note of about this site. First, notice that this site makes very good use of the Moodle News Forum. Recent posts into the News Forum are displayed in the latest news block here on the right hand side. When we go into the News Forum, You can see that one person in particular has been very busy populating the forum so as to provide relevant news and information to students studying the midwifery course. This is something that a course administrator could do that would really help to keep program sites current and active. The other emphasis of this site is on providing easy access to a host of relevant professional information. As we've seen in earlier examples, some of this information is organised by year level within the program. But as well as that, the course team has provided a host of important professional documents such as regulations, protocols and procedures for practice midwives. Because there are so many of these, and to make it easy for students to find them, the course team has organised these documents into folders. For instance, if we go in to say the Delivery Suite Guidelines folder, you'll see that it contains a great many documents detailing procedures to follow in various delivery contexts and circumstances. As well as this, there are folders of relevant professional publications organised in categories of professional publications, UK publications, and international publications. For example, in the category of UK publications, if we open the folder Department of Health publications, we'll find 17 individual documents. Basically, this site is trying to make it easy for students to find relevant publications when they need them throughout their time in this course. Our next example from the Faculty of Technology, Design and the Environment is different again. The most striking difference is that this site is a department level site. It groups together whole suites of programs in mathematics, statistics and engineering. Its focus is on publicising news and information to students in this department, primarily about careers and research. Notice that the department is using multiple communication channels to do this. It has a Twitter account that it uses to broadcast news of events like careers fairs, seminars and visits by industry representatives. The site feeds tweets into this block on the right hand side as a way of aggregating this news information. And it also has a Facebook site. Notice that it's part of a drive to obtain good response rates to end of module evaluations. The department has provided resources to help students use their mobile devices to fill in the end of module evaluation. Notice as well the use of a series of Moodle events calendars to provide easy access to upcoming dates of events relevant to students in the department. We can see, for example, as we browse to the 6th of November, there's a guest lecture on low carbon and climate ready buildings. One final thing to point out about this department level site is that it does provide links through to individual course level sites that are being used as well. These course sites are being used to hold course specific information while the department site focuses on careers and co- and extracurricular information relevant to students throughout the department. Our final example 
again from the Faculty of Technology, Design and the Environment, is, as you'd expect, different again. This is a course level site for a new fully online distance learning program, the MA in Publishing Studies. As well as course level information that will be relevant to students throughout their time on the program, this site is also an induction site for new students to the program. The course team has organised a two-week induction for students prior to the commencement of their formal studies on the program. The aims of the induction are to help students understand how the course works and how Moodle and other electronic environments will be used in the program. Notice that the team have implemented the Moodle progress bar to help students focus on the key elements or activities that they need to complete for their induction. They also use multimedia to offer immediacy and a human touch to what might otherwise be a fairly cold electronic environment for a distance learning student. For example, there's an introduction from the course leader. Welcome to the MA Publishing Studies and to the uh, first part of the induction program. This site is designed to help you get started in the program, to introduce you to some of the uh, software resources that we'll be using, uh, to um, share material from the course and also to help you communicate. I'm Sally Hughes. I'm one of the people who is the link into the university for you, but I'm only one. There are other people who will be helping you through this program, and we're going to be meeting them during the induction process. As well as this, there are a set of structured activities for students to do as part of their induction. These activities include socialization activities designed to help students get to know each other, and also how to use elementary things like Moodle discussion forums. And there are also activities where students work on course content as a way of helping them to get to know the kinds of tasks that they'll be required to do as part of their learning on this course. For example, here's a reading and synopsis task in which students are asked to upload an assignment to Turnitin. This little activity mirrors major course assignment processes that students will undertake in their studies. And then there is the usual course level information, such as links to student and staff profiles, resources about how the five Brooks postgraduate attributes are developed in the program, and even course level discussion forums and all the rest of the stuff that will give students a one-stop shop for course level information throughout their time in the program. Thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. To discuss any of the ideas in this little screencast or for more information you should contact either or both of the Oxford Centre for Staff and Learning Development or Media Workshop. And most importantly, you should get involved in discussions as a course team with your program lead and your subject coordinator to figure out how to get the best out of the program level spaces in Moodle at Oxford Brookes University. Bye for now.